I would like to invite Nicole Santi, our first speaker to the stage. Nicole is an adjunct professor at Texas Christian University and a doctoral candidate at Louisiana State University. She thrives on helping brands connect with their audience online and is an expert in influencer marketing, creating content and social media strategy. Using a data-driven approach and a keen eye for the latest trends, she's committed to staying ahead of the curve and delivering innovative solutions that deliver measurable impact. Welcome, Nicole. Hello, everyone. And thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here today. Uh, sorry, my slides are a little muted. We're not sure quite what was going on, but normally they'd be super bright and colorful. But uh, thank you so much for the introduction and uh, I'm excited to jump right in. Well, great. I'm gonna hop off stage and we're gonna Perfect. turn the time over to you, Nicole. Awesome. Well, hello everyone. And it's so great to have you here today. Um, like uh, the introduction, I'm Nicole Santi. Uh, and I, th I thought, you know, I'd get get started off with just letting you guys know a little bit about who I am. Uh, I am a PhD candidate at Louisiana State University right now. I got my master's from the Newhouse School at Syracuse and I uh, got uh, my bachelor's uh, from LSU in digital advertising. I uh, currently teach at TCU and uh, LSU as an adjunct professor while I'm finishing up my dissertation. Uh, my main research is all about social media, influencers, digital advertising, uh, specifically Specifically, I'm uh, right now with my dissertation, I'm looking at influencers and the engagement that they receive and how we can better understand, you know, why they receive the engagement that they do. Uh, but I've been teaching for the last five years. Uh, it's, a, it's a passion of mine. It's the reason I came back to, to school to get my PhD so I could get back in the classroom with students. Um, I've taught everything from social media analysis to visual communications to your introductory advertising classes. So I've done a little bit of it all. Um, and it's just something I'm really passionate about. So I, I really wanted to kind of focus on that aspect today. Um, before I went back to school, I worked in the industry for a couple of years. Uh, I interned with uh, formerly the Richards Group, now TRG, on brands like Dr. Pepper, 7-Up, Mott's. Um, and then I contracted for a year with an agency out of uh, DFW called 31,000 Feet, where I was a social strategist for uh, brands like Gold Bond, Icy Hot. Um, and so I've gotten to work on some really cool brands in my career. Um, and I always try to bring that into the classroom whenever I can. Um, but let's shift our gears a little bit. And, and I want to talk about, you know, why it is so important that we start engaging our students in the classroom beyond just what we do in our lectures and what they read in their textbooks. You know, I truly believe um, that students learn best through experiential learning. Um, where we're really able to bring those concepts that we're teaching them in the classroom to life uh, using these real world scenarios or as close to real world scenarios as we can get in the classroom. You know, students need these experiences because that's what they're going to see when they get out of the classroom and they get into the workforce. So we need to make sure we're giving them these in really engaging activities and projects so they can learn beyond just what they're reading in their textbooks. Um, and so today we're just gonna walk through a couple engaging activities for your classroom that you can adapt to however you're teaching, you know, social media strategy, influencer marketing, and really get your students excited and, and, and have them doing some activities that gets them to get beyond just what they're reading and, and to get them having fun in the classroom. You know, I've seen in the past, uh, you know, two or three semesters, especially since COVID, that students are really struggling to want to get engaged. They're, they're kind of apprehensive a little bit. And so I've, I've always looked at it like we need to try to get them excited to learn. Um, and so specifically for this presentation, I, I reached out to some of my former students and uh, some of my professional uh, friends that are working in the industry. And I said, you know, when it comes to influencer marketing, what are some of the things that, you know, we didn't teach you that you wish you would learn or on, uh, for my professionals, what are some things that you think students need to learn when it comes to influencer marketing? Um, and so I, I took in all their feedback and I, and I kind of put together some activities that you'll be able to implement into your classroom uh, to get your students engaged and, and to get them doing activities that will really translate to their career in social media strategy, if, if that's what they want to get into, to influencer marketing after they long leave your classroom. 
So to start things off, we're going to talk a little bit about influencer brand fit. Now, the first question or or comment, I should say, um, came actually from one of my best friends who's taken the industry by storm at an agency in Austin, Texas. Um, And she's a strategist and she's always really trying to, you know, find ways to connect her brands with their intended audiences. And of course, we can we can do this through influencers. However, She said that we need to make sure that we're not pushing influencers to make an ad for your brand. Instead, we want to make sure that we're fitting influencers, traditional, you know, everyday content into how we market our brands. And while a relatively novel idea in theory, um, the more I thought about it, the more I thought of all the ads that I see as I'm scrolling through TikTok and how can it can just be kind of awkward at times. You know, it's just ad after ad of highlighting products in awkward ways. And a lot of influencers themselves have even called this out um, with their practices saying it's just less organic and it makes the app a little bit less fun. Um, so for me, With this first activity, we're going to try to think less about how our students might select influencers with metrics and um, engagement and and things like that. Instead, I want us to think more about how we can identify influencers through the alignment with the brand. So one thing that you can do is you can have your students identify some popular brands with some unique products. Think like Reebok or Chobani, Dollar Shave Club. Now, I would shy away from makeup brands, beauty brands, because those are, you know, pretty easy to tie into influencers posts. And there's not a lot of resistance from consumers because after all, a lot of what those types of influencers do is try ons, try this product. Here's my, I'm reviewing this foundation. So try to stay away from categories like that. And instead really focus on some unique brands with some fun products. Now, What you're going to do is you're going to direct your students to really search for social media influencers. And you can go and and use any social platform that you use, you know, focus on whatever best fits your class or what best uh, fits whatever you're talking about when when you're working this and when you're working this activity. So that could be, you know, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever, wherever you want to do it on. Um, But have them identify just two or three influencers for that brand that could really seamlessly integrate uh, a a sponsored post into their traditional content. And kind of the goal for this is to get our students thinking less about how we can advertise and more about how we can advertise in a way that feels organic and really also aligns with the brands that we're trying to work with and their goals. So This could look like a couple different things. The first uh, is this awesome influencer on TikTok. Um, His account is Adventures in Ardia. And it's, this is a creator that my friend actually sent me. And if any of you guys are familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, these dice are a really big part of the game. Um, So this creator started a series called Roll for Sandwich, where he rolls the dice and kind of lets it choose what will make up his sandwich for the day. Um, And so this brand, Melinda's Hot Sauce, saw an opportunity to kind of do a sponsored post that didn't feel sponsored in any sort of way. Um, They had a brief introduction at the start of the video that just said, hey, this video is sponsored by Melinda's Hot Sauce. And then later, as he's rolling for what to put on his sandwich, you know, do I want wheat bread? Do I want ham? Do I want turkey? He added a whole other category of a roll just for Melinda Hot Sauces. Um, So again, it just shows how we can really seamlessly integrate our brand with influencers in a natural way. Um, and the comments that he receives from his audience um, that watch the ads, they, they continue to watch his contents because it feels the same as his typical content that he's posting every day. It doesn't feel like a sponsored post. It doesn't feel like an ad that just makes, you know, makes us want to move right along. Um, another great example of this is Corporate Natalie. Uh, Corporate Natalie is one of my personal favorite influencers out there. 
But um, she, again, she does a great job at seamlessly integrating sponsored posts um, into her typical content. She's kind of notable for her parody posts dealing with, you know, daily life and in the corporate business industry. Um, and so, for example, this video, what she did is she did a video about, you know, when you come back from a week long trip and all the things that you're having to do before you go back to work on Monday. And she's saying, you know, oh, I'm going to leave all my I'm going to leave all my laundry in the suitcase. But let me go see what I have in the fridge. And she pulls out this salad and she's like, oh, it's still good a week later. Wow, that's awesome. Them. Let's, let's 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 eat the salad then and you can tell she's very positioning that salad in, in a very strategic way but she seamlessly integrates it where she kind of goes back and forth between talking about this salad and going back to work you know oh, I've got a lot of emails to catch up on and, and things like that and again the feedback and the comments she receives and the fans just love her for both the sponsored posts and those organic con um, those organic posts that she's you know typically already posting and so this is just kind of an example of how we can identify influencers that we can we can choose a brand and then seamlessly align our content with that brand so these are some great examples to show your students and just a fun activity to get them thinking you know beyond just looking at number of followers the metrics that they received in regards of uh, engagement and, and get them thinking about how we can actually, you know, work with brands to create these sponsored posts that are really, really natural. Now, another comment that I got from my students, um, and this student, you know, I had last year and, and she's since gone into the social media field for a small agency in Baton Rouge. But while I talk about influencers in class, you know, she made me realize that we never really discussed how to approach influencers. And in fact, this wasn't the only student of mine that actually reached out about this topic. You know, I think we sometimes get so caught up in thinking about influencer marketing at large. Um, we kind of forget about the basic fundamentals, like actually connecting with the influencers that we want to work with. Uh, after all, you know, we have to look at a strategy from start to finish and connecting with those influencers that we pitch for brands to work with is, is, a, is a large part of this. It has to be worked into that strategy. So according to a report by uh, Influencity, which is a, a kind of a prominent influencer marketing uh, platform, in 2022, they said that most of the issues that brands and agencies report relate to connecting with influencers, communicating effectively, negotiating contracts, and establishing kind of clear goals and guidelines. Now, any one of these issues, if a misunderstanding occurs, it can really result in delays for your campaigns due to both, you know, the time and the effort that's required to establish these clear and coherent messages with the influencer working with. And while all of these are really important to consider, you know, the one that my, my students seem to be the most curious to learn about is actually communicating with them. You know, one wrong step in how we reach out to influencers can really lead them to them just not responding at all or even turning down the proposals that we kind of have put out there for them. So there are ways that we can let our students kind of practice this concept and learn how to have these conversations, you know, in the classroom and out of it. So what uh, kind of another idea of how to get our students engaged with this with this concept is students will be able to practice, you know, forming a strategy on how they can actually contact these influential figures, you know, both in the classroom and then some work outside of the classroom as well. So to practice this, you're first going to want to have your students group up and have them identify an influencer with some sort of connection to your university. You know, it's okay to think big. You know, for LSU, I immediately think of Shaq or uh, Sarah Edwards, you know, at LSU. Could be Travis Kelsey at Cincinnati. Uh, I'm a big Swifty, so I have to work Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey in here somewhere. Um, 
But uh, each group should really try to think about somebody that, that has the power, you know, to have some influence or potentially is even an actual, you know, what we think of as your typical influencer. Um, but each group should also try to contact somebody different. You know, it makes it more fun to see what groups can potentially succeed when we, when we get to the end of this activity. If everybody kind of has somebody different that they're trying to uh, reach out to. So once they have this influential figure uh, determined, and picked out. The next part is where the strategy is really going to come into play. You know, what is their plan? How are they going to contact them? What are they going to ask them to do once that contact is made? And for the sake of this class, I would encourage them to ask about doing something that would benefit the class at large. You know, could they do a quick virtual drop in and talk about their experience with brands and the deals and, and, and sponsored sponsorships that they've done? You know, a quick TikTok shout out or even, you know, a quick drop in guest lecture. Um, they can be creative and, and that way you can have a little bit of flexibility as well, you know, with your class schedule if that is actually something that they're able to do. Um, but, you know, once they have that that person identified, they got to think through the steps. They got to think through that strategy for communicating with that influencer. So a first thing they're going to do is they're going to create a plan to establish that relationship. You know, this step is really crucial. Um, and also, while this assignment, it, it might take a little bit of time, establishing that relationship before you have your students make content is really crucial because it shows, you know, influencers or, or your, your, your brand. Um, is a really big fan of theirs. And, and this just means following them on the selected platforms that they're on, engaging with the content that they post, you know, liking, commenting, things like that. Um, and, and it just really provides a great foundation for building that meaningful long-term relationship that most brands are, are wanting to make with the influencers they work with. So this is a, you know, really good place to have your students start. And it also shows your students that these, these brand communications don't just happen overnight. So once they've kind of established that relationship, they've been following them for a couple of weeks, they've been engaging, they have to determine where they're going to make that content. Um, there's several different ways that you can reach out to influencers. A lot of them have um, agencies that they work with. Some of them have emails on their profiles. Sometimes you can just slide into their DMs with requests if, if, if you know, they don't have too overwhelming followings. Emails a lot of times, the what we consider to be the most professional way. Um, so it might be a good starting place for your students. But have them work through that process of, of the pros and cons of how they can reach out to people in different places. And then from there, we kind of have two different tasks that we're going to want to ask them to do. If we were acting on behalf of a brand, you know, we would often reach out with a proposal, including, you know, what deliverables would be needed and even maybe talk a little bit about our brand. So, what you're going to do is you're going to have your students create, you know, a draft to both the school's influential, in, excuse me, influential figure, depending on, you know, what their previously selected goals are, um, but also have them draft one as if they were acting on behalf of a brand. Now, they won't send that one that, when they're acting on behalf of a brand, but it gives them an experience of actually reaching out to somebody, an influential figure, and actually, you know, thinking like they were doing that as a brand, what the difference is they would say. Um, and so it gets them some practice kind of dealing with actually communicating just from actual communication, but also if they were doing this on behalf of a brand, while also, you know, getting them to have that potential contact. Um, the hope in all of this is that, you know, your students will get the attention from, from the influencer that they've chosen and whatever action, you know, they ask of them, they'll be able to come in and do. However, you know, we all know that commu how communication works. Everyone, you know, is obviously, you know, you'd obviously give everybody a grade for just completing the different steps of this activity. But I always like to add some fun into my classes. I like to offer bonus points. I even like to offer a little bit of competition because I've always found that students thrive when they are competing against their classmates. So, um, you know, while I haven't tried this personally in my classroom yet, I'm actually going to try this this semester. And and kind of, kind of offer some bonus points to the groups that are actually able to 
build that communication and have some sort of end result with that influential figure. And, you know, while, while, while they may not receive a response at the end of the day, they're still working through that process of how we can communicate with influencers. And it's just a great experience for them to have and to, and to really practice their communication skills. And so an example of this, you know, I'm going to reach out. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to Shaq. He was on Icy Hot when I worked on Icy Hot and he's a, he's a big LSU figure. Um, and oops, I need to change my slide. Um, it, it might look a little something like this. Um, you know, if we look at Shaq, uh, he's, he's huge. He's, he's always talking LSU. And so you might have your students say, okay, what is their overall goal? Our overall goal might be to ask Shaq or one of his PR team or social media team members to really come on to Zoom, talk to our class for 20 or 30 minutes and just tell us about their experience working with brands. Um, and then kind of have them say, okay, well, why are you choosing to do this? Well, you know, he's not only a, a huge LSU figure, but he's heavily involved with a lot of different brands. And he would bring a really unique perspective into the classroom. Um, and then also have them identify what platform they're gonna reach out to them on. So for Shaq, it might be Instagram. He's very active there, he posts frequently. And, and that might be the chosen one that the students go, go and, and choose to. Um, from there, they would work on establishing that relationship. They'll pay close attention to the content that they post. They'll engage with it, comment on it, like it. And then from there, they'll draft what that strategy would be to reach out to your influential figure. Um, after they are doing that interaction, that's when they can go in and they can kind of draft this message. It might be say something like, you know, dear Shaq and team, we're current LSU students who have been following your Instagram account and we love your post about insert some sort of topic. Um, you know, they might add some sort of personal connection with something about LSU and Shaq. And they might add, say something like as social media students at the Manchin School, we have been learning about influencer, influencer marketing and our professor gave us a challenge to reach out to an influential LSU figure and see if they would be interested in so and so. Um, exact, it, that draft is going to be different for all your students and their goals. But have them do the draft, work through, you know, crafting that message with them, and then they'll go ahead and send that out to whatever influencer it is that they're they're trying to trying to reach. And then after that is when they would also draft a message as if they were working on a brand's behalf. So for Shaq, it might be, hey, we would love, we're an energy company or energy drink company, and we want to see if Shaq will do some sponsored posts about these energy drinks, you know. Um, we have to take into consideration that, you know, Shaq himself might be too busy. So, you know, he might have an agency representative or somebody that might be able to come and talk on his behalf. But, you know, it just gets your students thinking about how to properly do influencer outreach. And who knows, you might end up getting a drop in from someone like Shaq if your students really manage to break through that clutter uh, that we're, we see, you know, all over uh, the communications world now. Now, Moving into another activity, um, the next question I received from my students was kind of matched by a comment by a professional that would arguably kind of be the next step after contact is made with an influencer and other content creators. And my student asked quite simply, you know, well, how would the influencer know what to create? You know, we have our students draft up proposed content. Um, we have them talk about what we might want them to create. But is that really how that works? And the short answer is no. Um, this is always going to be that two-way form of communication in which the brand and the influencer really work together to, to agree on a plan for the content that they want to create and post. And, and this is kind of where a piece of advice from a student turned professional came in. And, and she just said that even though we've learned how to create social media briefs, being able to write briefs to send to content creators is a very valuable skill to have when really entering the workforce. So if you want to create any type of social content, content your students want to get into content creation, social media creation, um, this is a task that will really help them in the long run and prepare them to write these once they get out of the classroom, but also just engage them beyond just reading about strategies in, in their textbooks. And so there's several different things that can be included here, such as, you know, sometimes it might be really minimal directions that might include detailed shot list, aesthetic 
ask, you know, maybe even some mood boards um, or even postscripts of, of what might be actually posted in that um, sponsored post that you're that you're being uh, that's being created. But how you structure this is largely up to you and what you want your students to focus on. And you can really tailor it to whatever kind of topics you're able to cover more in your class. But there's several templates out there from a lot of different reputable um, influencer marketing agencies and, and platforms that you can really use for some guidance in this. And a couple that I've identified and, and, and I would love to use in the classroom um, is one from Influencity again. They do a really good job at, at saying, you know, here's our brand, here's what our campaign is about, um, what our campaign message might be, some of the objectives we might have, and even add that mood board or some of the things that we would and wouldn't want our influencers to do in uh, the, 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 the contract that we're, we're officially making with that influencer for that sponsored post. Um, another great one that you can look at is from Up Influence. They actually have a whole uh, a whole brief example that you can work through. That's a presentation, and they talk a lot about you know what who we are as a brand, what our goals are. They move into what that campaign might actually look like. Talk about a little bit about you know what those campaign deliverables are, and then even talk about campaign compensation. Um, and you know, compensation is, is is a big part of influencers as well because you know rates rates kind of determine what brands can work with certain influencers. And the nice part about this activity is that it can really be tailored to focus on any facet, you know, within UGC and social media. You know, if you're having your students focus on paid social media and, and focus really on paying, you know, influencers and things like that. Um, you can have it so that that portion of their, their brief is taking up a little bit more space and a little bit more time. Um, it could be really beneficial, though, because, you know, like I said, influencers often have rates. So we also have to make sure it aligns with the brand's mission. You know, brands aren't going to pay people if they don't align. But, you know, we have to be realistic with influencers that we select. And furthermore, with this activity, you can really challenge your students to find influencers that align with your given brands, like we talked about in an activity a couple minutes ago. Um, they can write a brief on behalf of a brand, depending on how they think they might respond. And not only does it get them thinking strategically again, but it also gets them researching about both brands and influencers on the social media platforms that they already spend so much time on. Now, to kind of round out how we can get our students engaged in the classroom, you know, most of us don't teach a semester long class on influencer marketing. And, and now I believe in, in upcoming years, and we're already starting to see this, we're starting to see more and more classes pop up that are just focused on this tactic. But until then, you know, we as educators are often tasked with teaching students beyond just influencers. And, and this can get pretty complicated as there is so much information that they need to know about social media strategy and marketing. And so one way I do this is by having a semester long social media project. You know, at LSU, one of my mentors, uh, Lance Porter, he called them a social media playbook. And, and our students would find a local nonprofit who needed a little help and, and really pitch a new strategy for them and, and hopefully for them to incorporate, you know, down the line. And these projects could include anything from social media audits to several weeks of content creation um, or even, you know, potential influencers that they can use. And I, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little plug. If you're doing, uh, if you're looking for a great resource on how you can kind of implement this into your classroom, uh, Karen Freeberg, I think I saw her in it earlier. She has a great book. Um, it's called Portfolio Building Activities in Social Media. Uh, she has so many great ideas in there of ways you can incorporate, you know, semester long projects like this. And I, I found it as a great resource and have, uh, you know, largely a lot, a lot of times kind of use some of our ideas in these semester long projects that I've included. But since we're talking about influencers this session, I wanted to dive into how I've incorporated influencers into this project and, and in the past and how when I teach, you know, another social media course in the future, um, I would change it. And so that what I do is I have my students identify 
key, uh, two key influencers for their brand. Um, I always tell them to think big, but to also think realistically, because you know, most nonprofits are not going to have a huge budget. So anyone they choose has to be somebody that they could realistically work with. Um, I have them do a screenshot uh, capture of their network. This could show things like the number of followers that they have, the social authority that they give. And then I also have them discuss some of the following questions. What do they think that, you know, these influencers communities mean for your clients and, and what links do they have to that nonprofit or brand that they're working for? How does their content really integrate with your brand and how using influencers like them can really help out your client? Um, you know, creating content is always a bonus, but I don't require them to do this. But if they're able to, it's a great way to have clients, you know, visualize what using influencers could look like in regards to your brand. Um, my first student example did this in a great way. Uh, this this group did a group uh, did a pitch for uh, NAMI Louisiana, and they made a pitch to use Sarah uh, Edwards, who was a gymnast at LSU at the time. Um, and, and while you know she might seem a little unreachable for a nonprofit. One of my students was actually friends with Sarah, and that's why they were able to kind of say, okay, this is the justification for why she might be available to, you know, be an influencer for this nonprofit. But you can see, uh, oh, I didn't change my side. Um, you can see here how they kind of went through who that influencer is, talked a little bit about why they would be great for the brand, and then even proposed some content that they might uh, have her create. And, and for, for, for this uh, social media strategy that they're pitching for this nonprofit. Um, this is another example from my students. Uh, this was a pitch for uh, Casa Baton Rouge. And, and this is a great example of how they showed these influencers and kind of their profiles in terms of, you know, how many followers they have, what is some of the... Uh, the, the topics that they talk about a lot through their kind of highlighted post um, and even what their bios are, you know, while also providing a little bit more detail and reasoning behind picking these influencers. And then lastly, uh, this group here did uh, for Friends of the Animals Baton Rouge, which is an animal shelter. And this example went really big because they wanted to find influencers that hit on the brand's, you know, personality. And for one, they did this re-rate dogs account, which is an account that goes and rate pictures of dogs that they see online. And, you know, they had a fun time analyzing the type of content that these creators made and, and how it aligned with the content that they pitched for the clients. And so they always have a really great time with this. I think the influencer portion of this assignment is where a lot of times they you can see this personality of your students coming through um, and really wanting to engage with you know, your class beyond just the textbook. Um, but you know, all of these ideas, you know, we have to try our best to adapt in the classroom to match what's happening in the real world. And by creating and working through activities like these, you know, we can truly engage our students with activities that get them not only excited about the social media industry, but also kind of prepare them for what lies ahead. You know, these activities and assignments are kind of meant for you to take and turn into your own and, and you kind of use these as a starting point to integrate into your classroom and how you're teaching your classes. But you know, it's, it's these activities that truly push them outside of their comfort zones where, you know, they can walk away from our classrooms, not only learning a lot, um, but also having such a fun time and having a smile on their face and, and, and being excited to learn and, and work on projects and learn about a topic that they're all so very familiar with. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, I love talking to, teach, uh, to people about, you know, influencers and everything else. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Nicole, thank you. This was an awesome presentation. Um, we do have questions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to read those and just Perfect. ask away, okay? Perfect. All right. So you talked a lot about influencer brand fit. Mm -hmm. What examples do you see? Oh, sorry. What examples do you use of not great influencer brand fits? And how do you teach that to your students? Yeah, so that's a great question. So whenever I think of not great fit, you know, I, 
I always, the night before I teach this, I always scroll through my TikTok feed because I'm on TikTok solely for the purpose of knowing what's going on. Um, I don't create, I'm kind of a TikTok lurker, but I always want to make sure that I know what my students are seeing and kind of what those trends are that are happening. So normally what I'll do is I'll try to go through and scroll through the night before and see if I can find some, you know, examples of, you know, influencers promoting project projects that you're like that doesn't, that's not their normal content. Like maybe it's a lifestyle influencer that's trying to sell you some power tool when they don't create DIYs at home or something like that. But I always try to find something that's happening at that current moment because odds are if I've seen it and we have similar interests in social media and influencers and things like that, they might have also run into, you know, things like that. Because that's kind of how the, the algorithm can work from time to time. So a lot of times I'll try to bring in those examples that are happening, you know, hours, days right before we talk about that influencer brand fit. Um, just because it keeps it fresh, it keeps it, you know, relevant. So, you know, right now I don't have an example of what I might do, but if I was to hop on TikTok, I could probably scroll for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and find one that's like, that brand and that influencer do not have the same thing. Clearly this influencer wanted money and they said, sure, I'll do it. Why not? Um, and so, yeah, when we talk about that, that's kind of how I propose it to them. I show them kind of the examples that we talked about today. And then I'll show them kind of the examples that just pop up on my feed. And I'll just throw the, I'll throw the, uh, the video on screen and say, how do you guys feel about this? And we'll have that open conversation about why they feel like this is not a great fit with that influencer. And, and then I challenge them to go out and actually find, you know, influencers that could work for those brands that do have that great fit. That's great. So if you're able to do it the night before, there is obviously a lot of good examples of yes. best to use. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's always great examples. There's always bad examples. And I think that's also partly because we're in such this age where everybody wants to be an influencer. So there's influencer and sponsored posts out there all the time. It's not hard to, to identify them. It's, you know, obviously they've got the little sponsored post now on the bottom of the video, but it's so easy to go out there. If you just spend a couple of minutes on these platforms, you'll, you'll find them, no problem. Great. Next question, do you have a template for students to use when reaching out to influencers or how do you teach that with your students? So I don't, I don't go based off a super certain template because I truly believe that how you reach out to influencers is on a case by case basis. Um, it depends on the content that they create. It depends on the topic that they, you know, they, they promote and they, they speak on. And so really I strive my students to kind of create their own template in a way based on what they've seen when they have been engaging and kind of seeing what that influencer posts about. You know, largely we know that a, a, a message is going to start out, oh, here's your introduction, here's kind of your ask, and here's kind of the rationale behind it. But truthfully, I kind of let my students take the wheel. You know, this is when they can learn. This is when they can make mistakes. And I've always been a very big believer of kind of letting them try the first time. And then if they don't quite get it, then saying, okay, let's sit back down let's kind of work through this together and let's kind of maybe translate what you've done here into something that aligns more with this influencer. So I don't really use a template. I kind of let my students take the lead and then we, we kind of refine it from there kind of based on who it is that they might be trying to reach out to. Great, thank you. Here's our next question. How do you help students overcome education anxiety in learning how to outreach? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, truthfully, I think it's by practicing in a safe space. Um, I tell my students straight off the bat uh, at the start of every class, I say, this is a safe place. This is where it's okay to mess up. This is where, you know, your job is not on the line. You know, I'm sure every professional has had that moment where they do something and they're like, oh no, oh no, I messed up. I can't believe it. You know, I, I was there when we worked, when I worked on, you know, ICI, we have double posts, you know, we all have those moments, but I try to tell them that, you know, this is the place where they can mess up. And this is the place where they can really practice these skills. And sometimes it takes literally sitting down with them, having them next to it and be like, okay, you know what? 
let's reach out to some people today. Even if it's just hopping on LinkedIn and saying, you know, if you want to get into social media strategy, let's, let's work on networking a little bit because networking is kind of similar to how we reach out to influencers. And so if that's even just sitting there with them and saying, Hey, let's craft some LinkedIn messages. Let's, let's make some connections and, and let's kind of try to get you over that anxiety that you might have, because if you're in the communications field, you're going to have to break that wall and uh, just kind of naturally working through that with them through things like LinkedIn messages, you know, it, emailing and I'm working through activities in class like this. I found that it really does help kind of break that wall down for them to where when they leave your class, they're a lot more willing and, and, and able to reach out to people that they want to reach out to. Yeah, that's great. How do you teach students the value of micro influencers so they are not just focused on the few expensive mega influencers? Uh, statistics. For that, I pull out all the stats from all the influencer marketing reports. Um, and not only that, I tell them to go look at the people that they follow. Um, you know, we all have those influencers that have huge followings that we love, but we all also have smaller influencers that we all follow. And, and tr typically what happens is I'll ask the question, okay, so, you know, how many of you people follow Kim Kardashian? And, you know, a lot of the hands will raise depending on who it is or another big influencer like that. Um, but then I'll say, but how often do you actually interact with them? And they'll, oh, I like a post and things like that. But I'm like, but how many of you guys actually comment and respond and actually want to engage with those influencers. And a lot of times they don't. Um, and so kind of between having that conversation and simply showing them the statistics of, you know, micro influencers, you know, these smaller influencers get that engagement that brands really want. And that's largely why brands opt to work with them a lot of the time. And because there's that personal connection there, you know, you, you, we think a lot about parasocial relationships with influencers and those parasocial relationships are often going to be strongest with those smaller influencers. So I think pulling out the statistics, having that conversation with them about who are some of your favorite influencers and look at how many followers they have compared to some of these others. Um, and again, also just being real with them on the cost, you know, bring up some of their rates, show kind of the different averages for different categories. Because I think when you start to look at it like that, you know, you're not going to be able to have a nonprofit paying a Kim Kardashian to, to talk about their brand. It, it, it maybe she would out of the goodness of her heart, but you know, it's, it's, it's different when, when they see it from that perspective. And so that's normally how I approach it in my classroom. I like that. I like how you use the example of what they actually comment on. I never thought about it in that personal way before, but that, yeah. that really will drive it well, home to them. This, this generation too, they are so ingrained in social media. I was having this conversation with my advertising class last night. You know, I was like, how many of you guys remember social media not being around? This group can't they don't know that life now. I was telling them how, you know, I, when I was growing up, my mom wouldn't let me have a MySpace, but she let me have a Facebook. And that was a huge deal back then. And now it's, it's so ingrained in their everyday life that use that, use the fact that they know social media and they are on social media, use that to get them to, to make these connections in the classroom. That's great. Um, so a lot of people commented on your assignments and how they really like what you're doing. And a common question is, do you have a written document or do you just share the idea with them in class? I, so it, it kind of depends. A lot of the times I'll put it in a presentation like this. We'll work through those steps. In the case of these, um, especially with that social media playbook, kind of that last one, that is a full on written assignment that we work through throughout the semester. Um, if it's just more of like an activity, like that brand um, fit activity that I'll have them do, that's something that I'll throw on the presentation. I'll leave that slide up for the remainder of class. And I try to give them a good amount of class time to work on that. So I'm there with them. We're able to have those conversations back and forth. Um, so I can make sure they're kind of going on the same direction. You know, I, 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 there's value in having those hard copy written assignments for some things, but also for some of these activities, I, I think it's good to be able to tailor it to how your class is doing that semester, how they're working, what they're learning, you know, all of these activities could easily be tailored to 
a specific segment within a social media or influencer class. And so um, I normally kind of leave them a little bit open, but for those more semester long, you know, very big parts of their grade, I'll normally have like a written out assignment for that. Great. Um, so Christine asked, where are you finding statistics about influencers? Uh, my go-tos, and uh, the reason I, I know this is because I'm in the heart of writing my dissertation literature review right now, uh, I turn a lot to Influencer Marketing Hub. Um, they do a lot of good uh, social media reports every year um, that I will go and take a lot of those statistics from. I'll turn to organizations like uh, Hype Auditor, Sprout Social, a lot of those social media analytic platforms that are actually being used by brands. Um, most of them put out annual reports that have a lot of statistics about influencers. They'll go and they'll do big surveys of marketers. They'll do surveys of influencers and in kind of the industry at large. Um, and so that's normally where I'll go and I'll actually find those numbers and pull those numbers into the classroom. And, and they, they post them on a pretty annual basis. So it's pretty easy to, to get those new reports and continuously up those, um, update those within your classroom. Great. Okay. Now, Nicole, are you teaching a full influencer course? I am not, but it is something that I am hoping I get to do <laughs> in the okay. future. Uh, once I once I land somewhere at a, at a university and I'm done with my dissertation, that is my first ask. Can I teach a class on nothing but influencers? Because it is, it is something that I just find so fascinating and, and the strategy and, and everything behind it is just so cool. And it's at such a high right now. And like I said, everybody wants to be an influencer. I mean, I think it'd be so cool. So uh, yeah, it's it's something that I want to do. I haven't done it yet, uh, but I'm hoping I get to in the future. Great. Well, we had a question of how to get their university on board with a full semester class for that. So yeah, no, I mean, let I think us know when that, you get that figured out. Yeah, I still have to get that figured out. But I, I think I think the numbers support it. I think the data supports it. I think if you go and look at just how big it is now, it, it, it really is a key part to any brand. Uh, I had several professionals comment on and how it's no longer an option for them. Uh, and so if you can kind of get on board with that and kind of show the value of that, I, I feel like you could probably get your, your school on board with it as well. Yeah. Okay, well, I have one question left, yeah. and this is how can we assess the brand influencer fit in a more objective way, and do you have criteria for that? So, no, I don't really have criteria. You know, it's it, social media, it, it, it is truly subjective. Like, it, 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 it's really hard to be objective, and, you know, I, I even tell my students that up front. I say, look, social media can be a very subjective industry, and then same thing with influencer marketing. You know, what I deem to maybe a good influencer fit may not be an influencer fit to somebody else. Um, a lot of times, if I'm not sure, I'll actually reach out to my friends that are in the industry, and I'll be like, hey, Hey, my students did this example of fit. Like, do you think this could actually work? Um, because again, they're the ones out there that are that are actively working with these influencers. And while I'm in the classroom teaching them about it, I want to make sure I'm always up to date with it, with as much as I can be. And so, if I'm ever not sure, I I'll, I'll shift it over to them and I'll be like, "Hey, it's your uh, it's your education moment here. I need you to help me out with this." Um, and most of the time, they're more than willing to do that. But um, like I said, most of the time, I, I, that's why a lot of times with these activities, I, I do them as completion grades. They either do it or they don't do it. I don't necessarily give them a, oh, this is a really good job. You get a B plus um, because it is subjective. And I want, I want them to focus more on learning through that process than be worried about a grade at the end of the day. Um, because yes, we have to have something to grade them on. I do that through that semester long social media project, meeting deadlines. Did they include all the criteria that they need? Um, or, you know, I do it more completion based where it's like, hey, I want you to work through this. I want you to see the value of what it is we're talking about. I want you to see the value behind what we're doing as opposed to worried about their grade at the end of the day. I, that's something else I tell my students at the start of the semester. I say, look, if you come to class, if you're engaged, if you pay attention, if you meet these deadlines, you're going to be okay. I instead want you to walk out of this classroom being a better learner and a better social media marketer than you came at. And if they can do that, then they've done, they've, they've met their, met, met all the goals of the course for me. So. Well, I'm excited. Sign me up for your class. <laughs> hey, anytime, anytime. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. Well, Nicole, thank you so much. This was amazing. Uh, we even had a comment, um, Karen, I believe this is Karen Freeberg, author of uh, personal branding course we're here at Stukin who says that 
um, you need to write an influencer courseware for students. So hey, I'm proud about love that. that. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> All right. Well, once again, thank you so much, Nicole. We really thank appreciate you so your much. insights and your preparation and sharing this with us. Today. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. And like I said, if anybody ever has any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to to brainstorm on how we can, you know, better prepare students for the future. So right. love it. Love it.